Ever been in a situation where you're just taking more and more work, but there's still no raise? Ever feel stuck because you just haven't been moving forward because you're just not getting those promotions that you want inside your career? Don't worry, you're not alone. I'm gonna share how to professionally ask for a raise and take control of your career, whether you're in data science and data analytics or in any other field. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff, and for those who don't know me, I'm a business analyst consultant at a Fortune 4 company, and I got my first data analyst position 13 years ago. But before that, I worked my way up from a temp data entry position. I've been promoted and received multiple raises across various companies, often advancing faster than many of my coworkers and peers. So if you're feeling this way about your career, I know how you feel and the steps to take to get out of it. And recently I responded to a post on Reddit where somebody asked, how do I professionally ask for a raise after taking on more responsibility without compensation? And to my surprise, my comment was the top response with over 360 upvotes. Many users also shared how they received similar advice and how it's worked for them, including one person who said to turn on your open to work on LinkedIn, going from 75K to 120, then 140 to 200K, and then now they're currently negotiating, negotiating 200K to 250K. So what this shows is these strategies aren't theoretical, They've also helped others secure significant raises outside of myself. Let's cover what I said, plus we'll add more context to the advice after. So first off, what I said was you need leverage. When you have no leverage, the company doesn't have any pressure to offer you a raise, especially when it's off cycle from when they often do their evaluations and offer raises. So the way that you do get around this is when they need to retain you because you might be leaving the company because you got offered a better position. So one of the best career advice that I received was from my old VP of IT. I was young and I was starting out in my career and our company just got acquired and there were talks about getting rid of our department and where I was located and moving me to the analytics department, but this was 1.5 hours away from my current location a past LA with no traffic. So it, there's times where I went to that office and it took me two to sometimes three hours just to get there. And because of this, I didn't want to move or relocate, but I had this chance to attend a training with our new VP of IT. He heard about my situation and then he told me that I had more say in this decision than I thought. And then he gave me advice that he gives to all of his direct reports underneath him. What he says is he tells them to apply an interview at least twice a year, even if you're happy and you don't want to leave the company. This way you understand what opportunities you have out there and what your current market value is. This does two things. First, it gives him leverage and business justification to match the salary to retain his employees. And if the company is unwilling or unable to retain their best employees, it gives his employees the opportunity to leave the company for better opportunities to be paid what they're worth and to grow inside their careers. While I suggest you gather all the data, make a compelling pitch on why you're justified for receiving the raise, where you show your achievement and you show how your new work is generating this much profit, this much time savings, and it's going directly to the business's bottom line, it's significantly easier to present your pitch while having several job offers where you're doing similar work for higher pay. And now that you know this, you can share a story of how you heard from a friend about career advice to get a better measure of what your market value is currently, but you want to say that you love the company, the team, and you want to stay. But because of higher inflation, rising costs, you need to put the needs of your family or yourself first. But you want us to reach out to your boss, to your manager, and see if there's any room to match or negotiate before you plan to leave. Now you have leverage on your company and real justification for getting that pay raise and also have the option if your current company is unwilling to pay you what you're worth, then you're able to take a new role with higher pay and you can just leave the company. I wanna add some context and more actionable steps based on the replies inside this Reddit post. One of the things that this assumes and that I assumed as well is this assumes that the person asking was already a top performer. This advice is significantly less effective if you're easily replaced. So tip number one is establish yourself as a top 
performer. If you're not consistently among the top performers on your team, it'll be much harder to justify asking for a raise. Tip number two is get buy-in from your manager. Your manager should be invested in your growth and willing to advocate for you. If your manager doesn't support your progression, they're unlikely willing to push for your raise or your promotion. Make sure that you have regular check-ins with your manager and that your manager knows what your goals are. Ask them for help. Let them know. You'd be surprised on how many people do not say this simple thing. And then they go through year after year thinking that they should be getting raises and they never get their raise when they could have just got it if they asked. And then part of getting them invested in your growth is asking them for their help and advice to getting to your goals. I personally told my managers in the past that I want to get promoted to whatever my next position is. What is your advice to help me get there? I've also said that I want to reach a five out of five for the end of my year evaluation. What would it take for me to get there? What would you recommend me doing so that I can get there? Listen to what they say and then go above and beyond it. And then tip number three is make your case with data. You're an analyst or an aspiring one, so you use data so you can justify and tell a story to justify your raise. How much revenue has your projects generated? How much time have you saved? For example, if your work saved you 200 hours for your team, what you gotta do is just multiply that by the average hourly rate of the coworkers' times that you've been saving and then present that as a value you've added to the company. There are a lot of different ways to spin this. You just have to be able to use that data and also the new skills that you're learning, put it into visualizations, make a portfolio piece out of it, and then you'll also be able to have that when you interview. But this is one of those things that'll help you get that raise as well. And then tip number four is what we've been talking about is leverage job offers. If the pitch doesn't get you the result that you want, the salary that you want, at the time that you want, external offers can give you additional leverage and justification to reach the salary levels that you want or the promotion levels because other companies are willing to pay you, especially for the same work that you're already doing. But remember, and this is the most important thing, approach it as a collaboration. This is not an ultimatum. You're not supposed to be standoffish during these meetings. And it's not just supposed to be one and done meeting. It's supposed to be a gradual talk over a longer period of time. This shows that you're serious, but you're also being professional. Now there was additional concerns that were raised inside the Reddit post about whether leveraging job offers could backfire. Yes, they could backfire if you take a confrontational stance. But if you approach it from a problem-solving conversation where you want to stay, you want to work with your boss, and thinking about creating a win-win scenario for you, your manager, and company, that often does a lot better. It's all in how you use your social skills and your soft skills to present the raise and these offers. And then even when you do all of these works, sometimes though, the manager is going to tell you that their hands are tied and they can't do anything and that you're going to need to wait till the next promotion cycle. So in those cases, you're just going to work closely with them, over deliver on expectations. And then also you have the ability to evaluate if you want to wait and wait for that raise. If you're not willing to wait, then the job offers that you've gathered give you the option to move on, or you can just keep gathering more job offers till you find a better job. Other times, it definitely could backfire. It depends on the type of person your manager is and their personality. If they are petty, overly sensitive, and would take this as like a personal slight to them as a manager, then it could backfire in those cases. But if that's the case, why would you want to keep working for them? That's a question that you would want to ask yourself as well. You want a manager that would be sad to see you leave and would fight for your raise, but would be happy for you if you took that new opportunity to see you grow inside your career and do better in life. You want a manager that actually cares about you as a person. And then finally, it's going to be your company. Unfortunately, some companies rarely give raises or promote employees. So good luck trying to change an established company culture that doesn't reward top performers. In those cases, it's just easier to leave. Now that you know how to ask for a raise, but how do you gain new skills for free or cheap to make you more valuable in these meetings? Watch this video here to learn how.